We are God's Church of Love Online. You've got to hear this. This is deep. Go on, Rashad. Yes, I had a dream uh, the other night, a couple of days ago. Um, it was basically, I had an old church buddy that I have not talked to in a while, but he was in my dream. And he just walked up to me and asked me, do you want to be delivered? And I'm like, yeah. And he's like, lay down on the ground. I'm like, on my stomach? And he's like, he said, yes, sure. And I laid down, and he basically put his head on my back. And I don't, I can't remember him saying any words. If he did, I just don't know what, exactly what he said. But he started pulling demons out of me. Like, literally, I felt pre the presence of a demon or something leaving my body whenever he was to put his hand on my back and pull it, like, as if you're pulling something up. And I, when he first did it, I felt something leave, and I was like, "Oh, it's a demon that's leaving me. It's something's coming. It's something actually is coming out of me." Mm -hmm. And then he he did he did it about three times, and the more he kept doing it, like the more he was progressing and doing it. I think like the third time is when he had to start actually kind of tugging with something because whatever it was was like really fighting and didn't want to get out, but. He was like, the more he pulled on it, it would, and I actually started feeling a lot of pain. Yeah. <clears throat> in my, on my backside, like it started actually hurting. Like I, at some point, that's because of him pulling, him trying to pull on me, pull this thing out. It's yeah. Like I actually started experiencing pain. Wow. And, and, um, but he was actually was able to get that out, whatever it was. And I stood up. And the first thing I did was I, I felt a pre the presence of a, something invisible standing over there near me. And whatever that was had to be one of the demons that were possibly in me. Yeah. And I told it, I said, I rebuke you in Jesus' name and I command you to leave now. <laughs> as soon as I said that, that thing took off. And yes. There was no fear in me at all during this dream. Like, I didn't have any fear or anything. It Beautiful. Was just, I was just letting it all happen. Right. And it just took off, ran off. <laughs> And um and I just felt the presence just leave. Wow. And and I noticed in the dream, which I've never noticed this in my life since I and this is something I actually want to experience, is that I noticed I, my my mind felt clear. Mm -hmm. Like I felt uh, that like heaviness of life and all of the problems that I've been facing, I felt all of that. It wasn't in the, it, I didn't feel like that no more in the dream. I felt like, you know, after that experience I felt lighter. That lighter feeling that y'all hear when people say they get delivered from something and then yes. it's so light as a feather. Yes. That's how I felt. My mind, like, I still felt like, like Pat told me, like, you can still have those tendencies, like, to go back, you know, you know the enemy that tried to get you to come back. But I felt like in that dream that I had more of a grip on my, like, I had more control, more right. control than I would have, you know, if I didn't get delivered, didn't, wasn't delivered. Right. It was a feeling of, you know, now I, I can make the right decisions and I have a clear mind. My mind felt really clear wow. at that point. That's something I, you know, Pat, Pat told me that, you know, even if it's a dream, that it could mean that I was delivered for something right. in, in like actual real life. Right. And, um, right. yeah, it, it was really, it was a nice dream. Mm -hmm. I, it could, no fear and, and deliverance and, um, that was one of the dreams. I had another dream a week before. I was telling something. It was invisible. Again, I was telling it to go in Jesus' name. And it it, it was, it sounded like I made it leave, but it what didn't want to go. Like right, it was, it right. said, no. I heard right. Say, no. And it was a really, really mm -hmm. evil voice. Mm -hmm. It sounded really angry when it said it to me. Mm hmm but it, 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 that one left as well. So I've been having these past two weeks, I've been having dreams of casting out, I don't know, getting delivered from mm -hmm. stuff like that. So. Exactly. And see, when you dream it and you feel it like that, it's really happening. Every, every right. demon I've ever battled in a dream, when I woke up, I knew it was real. I knew it wasn't just a dream. It wasn't just a nightmare. First, the first demon I ever dreamt about uh, it was overpowering me. I was overwhelmed and I thought I was going to die in that state. And a quiet voice, a very, very faint voice said, you have Jesus. And I didn't know, I didn't understand 
you know, what that meant. Okay, I know I'm saved, so, you know, it was like, you have Jesus, so like, use it. And I was like, oh, let me try the name. I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. And then, boom, it was, I mean, it didn't go right away. It took me about three or four times or five or six times because I was so weak. But every time I said, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus, my strength returned more and more until I was screaming at the top of my lungs, sitting up, pushing it off of me. I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. And, and I woke up sitting up in that position. And the Lord let me know that was not, <clears throat> it was not just what you call a random attack. It was strategic from God himself. That was his first lesson to me of spiritual warfare. And I was like, oh, so I realized that a lot of the dreams we have is not only God showing us where we are and where we're not, but also God teaching us different ways of doing spiritual warfare. One time I couldn't get rid of a demon by saying, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. And all of a sudden this praise rose up in me. And I said, I will praise the Lord. And my feet left the ground and I heard the rushing mighty wind of heaven. And I knew that I was surrounded by God's angels, even though I couldn't see him, I felt them. And I started, uh, I started praising God at the top of my lungs. And the demon put her hands to her ears because she didn't want to hear it. And I shouted that much louder. Then I lowered myself and walked over for spite to make her suffer. And I hollered in her face, praises to God. I mean, the wind was whipping in that house and sounded like a tornado, but nothing was moving out of place. And I knew when I woke up, God showed me that was another form of spiritual warfare. Ah, yeah. Anytime, anytime you dream demons, you are dealing with a demon. It's not just a little random little dream. And God will take you from glory to glory, from strength to strength in your dreams as you learn to deal with them. I had one where there was a pillar over me and I had to go under the pillar. And as soon as I went under the pillar, these demons started flying down from the sky, attacking me, scratching and digging and clawing at me. I was so annoyed. I was so angry. I said, get off of me. Get out of here in the name of Jesus. I was just annoyed. And then the next one came running next to me and I looked at her and my discernment level rose up high and I knew she was a demon. She looked like a little innocent teenager. And I said, so what did you say to get rid of them? And she said, oh, I said the same thing you did. I said, well, say it. And she said, oh yeah, yeah, you said the right thing. I said, say it. She wouldn't say it. I said, okay, you won't say it, I'll say it. I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. <laughs> She flies up in the air and disappears. And then two more start coming down from in front. And I said, no, I had enough of this. I'm waking up. I knew then it was a class. And I sat up in the bed. And I said, Lord, why did I have to have a dream like that? I mean, and then the Lord said, how did you feel? And I was like, angry. Right. You felt no fear. You're, you're at a new level of strength. And I said, ah, it was strength and discernment. So God is developing us in the dream. He's developing us and adding power and strength as we battle demons. Amen. That is definitely something that we all will one day have to experience. Yep. If it's God's will, we all have to, you know, yep. that's what we're going to be doing when we go out to, you know, that's right. Get other people say there's going to be <laughs> demons showing up and that's <laughs> right. And we're going to have to, you know. And what will and you do? Be, How will you handle right. it? Right. How right. will you react? Right. Exactly. Because <laughs> that, that that reminds me of that time where I was at church. Well, I went to a, a right on a, a random day. I went to a church and um, and there was a lady in there. And she was, you know, doing having a demonic. You know, I don't know how to explain it, but she was acting very demonic. Like she was, her personality was switching, and she was just acting crazy. You know what the world would say, crazy. Right. And I wanted to leave, 
And I was going to get up and go. I was like, oh, I can't. My nerves is bad right now. I can't stay here with this. And as soon as I went outside, it was a lady coming up the steps. Oh, the lady, she was like, where are you going? And I said, oh, I'm leaving because I, I don't know about all that. <laughs> and the lady said, no, don't go. God, I got something for you. Don't go. And I went, turned back around and went back in and sat down. The lady was still in that and crazy. <laughs> and I was like, oh, my God. But um, I stayed during the entire service. And, yeah, she, she was really doing a lot of stuff and then like just just mocking God, all kind of stuff. And and it was, you know, but again, it was just an experience mm-hmm. that I think God wanted me to see. And what was crazy is that the lady that was doing that was her old classmate. Mm. This was a random church. Never been to this church before. But it was a, the lady that was acting like that was a familiar person. And it was a person from my classroom when I was in sixth grade. Wow. Yeah, and I haven't seen that girl in over 10, 12 years at that time. That was back in 2016. And I haven't seen her since 20, 2006. Yeah. So what, 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 who, who, who you think set that up? Mm-hmm. <laughs> and that was a random church. A random church. Mm-hmm. I could have went to any church in Jacksonville. We got a whole bunch of churches there. Tons of something. I went to that one church. But, um, yeah. And it was right the time Pat told me, because we were talking on the phone, and you would, I told you about the experience that I had when I was young. Yeah. And you was like, maybe God is, is uh, I'm just paraphrasing. You may experience that again, Rashad. Something similar to that. Mm-hmm. Because God is trying to, what you're telling us right now, trying to build us up. And about a week later, <laughs> I experienced it. Yeah. Yeah. It's like uh, when I was in uh, in the hospital and that one woman was cussing everybody out. I, I, I never seen anybody be so mean and so, I mean, she was just an ignoramus and she was just cussing the staff out and they couldn't do anything right and they were trying to kill her and the, I mean, it was ridiculous. It was almost like this woman was in a crazy ward. That's how, that's how off she sounded. And I got tired of hearing it and I got tired of seeing the staff's feelings getting hurt. So I said, Lord, I want this woman out of here. So I said, Satan, whatever demon you are that's causing this woman to act a butt and run her mouth, I command you to leave and take her with you in Jesus' name. Within 20 minutes, that woman got up, threw her blanket off and said, I'm out of here. And she commenced to cussing him out as she was walking out the door. She left. So the demon left and took her with him. <laughs> right. Is that out loud? Huh? Did you say that out loud? Yeah, we well, yeah, I said it out loud, but not where she can hear me, but where the demon. See, demons, you don't have to uh, yell for a demon to hear you. I tried that. I've like tried that multiple times. It never nothing ever happens. Mm-hmm. Well, as okay. as time happens, it'll be your faith. As your faith builds, then you'll see more power. That's not yeah, not great, a problem. Can, That's a learning process. Can, can you give me a, a, an example of a time you tried to do that? Like, what you mean? Like, literally, it? exactly what she just said. I tried that when I was at the hospital and I uh, twisted my ankle. Yeah. There was this dude that was just acting up. And so I started praying and everything. I was trying like rebuking and uh, what happened to me, I texted the mission before, I was over at the homeless center and, and someone was super acting up and just really abusive and crazy and doing all sorts of things. So I just sort of went back in the closet and I started rebuking uh, that demon. I said, uh, You're, you cannot stay here any longer. You must leave. I rebuke you in the name of Jesus Christ. You must leave. You cannot stay here. You must go. You must go now. So anyhow, I'm, I'm doing that, and then I stop. And then within about, i say five to ten minutes, uh, what was the funniest thing was uh, everyone, 100% of the time, always leaves through the normal doors, which is like 50 feet away. You have to go through the normal doors. But there was one door that was right next to the area that I was rebuking this this person. And it's a emergency exit that says not to go out that exit. And within the five to ten minutes, that person went out that exit. Yep, yep. 
That yep. was really funny. Yep, exactly. <laughs> that was the funniest part is because they didn't go after normal extras. Exactly, exactly. That, that's that's like with those dogs that, that was fighting each other and the lady was at her house trying to break them up. Yes. And they were fighting for like 15 minutes. That other dog was, I literally was killing that dog. I can hear that dog say, like, he was making all kinds of stuff. It, it, it was a girl, it was a girl dog that was tearing his butt up. Wow. Feisty, feisty little thing, you know. And I just kept him out. She was just back there trying to break him up, the, the owner. And they wouldn't. And the moment I said, okay, I said, in Jesus' name, I command you to stop. As soon as I said that, that dog, I looked at it, that dog let go. Yep. She let go of the other dog. Yep. And I mean, she, it, it, was a, it was two pits. So it wasn't like the lady was able to, because you know when pits lock their dogs, it's like you can't punk out there. You can't pull them. You can't pull them off. So she didn't pull them off. I saw the dog let go. Yeah, that, that thing was relentless. What you call it? Relentless. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. She was not trying to let go. She was ready no. to ready to kill that thing, that other dog, and she stopped. Mm. Well, you know the thing what? about uh, for you guys who who haven't seemed to see much results in that, don't let that uh, dishearten you. The reason is because. Uh, there are gifts in the body of Christ, okay, and there are people who have experienced a lot in the spirit realm, and they experienced a lot because God's going to use them a lot. Some people are more pragmatic in their ministry, and that ministry will be uh, more of a hands-on, more of a practical more common sense, uh, wisdom, truth, all of that. There are people who have different levels of anointing in different areas. And, That's right. Yeah, and some people have a heavier anointing in the supernatural, and some people have a heavier anointing in truth. And there are times when you will be able to tell the truth in a way that I won't be able to, and it'll it'll hit the bullseye. But then there are other times where I'll be able to spot a demon that you may not be aware of is even in the room. And I can get rid of it before anybody notices it was even there. It's all about where your level of faith is and where God is using you the most. And uh, three areas God uses me a lot <clears throat> is an exhortation, that's encouragement. And doing spiritual warfare, seeing demons, battling demons, getting rid of demons, and in inner healing. He uses me a lot in those three areas. It depends on where, how God's going to use you. I, I see a lot of your gift, Andrea, deals with, uh, you're very similar to Milton. You have a lot of that tell it like it is. That's what Milton did. He told it like it is. He called a spade a spade. But Milton didn't have many supernatural experiences. But his wisdom and his truth, oh my goodness, phenomenal. He had me beat by 10 miles in that area. That was his strength. That was his gift. So different people will be strong. A thumb, a thumb cannot dance, but your feet can. So it's, it, it all depends on how God is using you in the body of Christ, what role you play. Yet a hand cannot function well without the thumb. The thumb is the leverage of the hand. And without the thumb, the hand is, is, is at least 40, uh, 40 to 60% useless because it cannot do what it needs to do without a thumb. So even though the thumb can't do much, the thumb is vital, vital. So don't gauge what you can or what you cannot do. Just operate in the gift you know God placed in you and work that bad boy. I mean work it because it's powerful. 